I would like to achieve two goals with my short intervention today. First of all, I would like to inform you what the European Investment Bank can do to foster green growth in that region. And secondly, how you can benefit from the multitude of finance that is available to bring your projects forward. So let me start with what the European Investment Bank is and what it can do in the form of green growth. Um, actually, this is now my third forum that I participate. The European Investment Bank has been with the Baltic Sea Regional Strategy from the very beginning. We have been aligning our lending activities very closely to the aims that are postulated in the regional strategy. Um, we are the EU bank. We are owned by the 28 member states. So our purpose is to implement EU policy. And as the Baltic Sea regional strategy is regional policy, we have uh, done our lending programs in the past years in complete alignment with this regional strategy. Um, a lot of people don't know it, but we actually are the largest multinational financial institution in the world. We lend 52 billion euros on an annual basis to around 400 projects worldwide, the majority of it within the European Union. Um, the Baltic Sea region gets around 7.8 billion euros on an annual basis. And if we try to uh, summarize what portion of this funding goes in particular to the green sustainable parts of our business. This is 1.6 billion euros annually contributing directly sustainable projects. Projects that are, all of our projects are of course sustainable because we mainstreamed uh, 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 environmental uh, uh, projects, but uh, these are projects that are either contributing to energy efficiency, to renewable energies, to research that is 100% uh, dedicated to find new fuel sources or other forms of, of, of uh, resource efficient technology. To differentiate us from the Commission, our monies have to be repaid. We are extending loans. So it's very important that we screen our projects, whether they are actually generating enough funding themselves to repay it. And that, I think, is the link to the uh, Baltic profit, Baltic ecology question that is today being discussed. Um, because there is, and there is a lot of activity whereby environmentally sound projects actually generate profits. They make enough money to be able to repay themselves. And actually, in combining EU funding that is available as grants and blending into our lending possibilities, i.e. that we can sort of pre-finance the investment, which is then generates the funding to repay the loan, that actually boosts uh, in a lot of sectors activities that would not have been there before. Um, let me shortly um, tell you about the, the lending process. Because um, since the start of the Baltic Sea Regional Strategy and since the start of uh, the focus of uh, a lot of the institutions work on sustainable uh, projects, um, we have realized that actually the intervention is very important to already start at the developmental stage of the projects. So we have uh, now have uh, our business founded on three pillars, which is lending, blending, and advising. So advising actually is at the core. We start helping people, helping promoters put projects together so that they actually are in a form that they can be uh, absorbing either Euro European structural funds or that they are prepared for uh, attracting finance from a multitude of investors. Um, this advisory also takes the form of technical advisory and there are a lot of initiatives together with the Commission 
whereby uh, projects are being kickstarted. I just want to, in the field of renewable energy, mention, for example, the initiative ELENA, whereby technical advice is given for energy efficiency or renewable energy projects. Um, the next thing is to uh, create objective criteria for uh, renewable or energy efficient financings. We, for example, have in the last years developed a uh, carbon footprint methodology whereby we benchmark each of our projects to um, in each sector so that we actually can, when we assess the project, see whether this particular project is better than another project and whether it's worthwhile financing it compared to the, to the sector average when it comes to the carbon footprint. We are prioritizing research and development in the renewable and in the energy, in the sustainable energy fields, because we believe that what really brings Europe forward in this green growth is by having uh, access to the cutting edge technology, which is, I think, especially in this region, uh, a front runner in the development of these technologies. Uh, when it then comes to funding, we are also currently developing, together with the Commission, a range of innovative financial instruments to go beyond the normal straightforward lending process, to ensure that really every part of the business can be supported by EU funding. And this goes from uh, equity funds over risk sharing, uh, mechanisms together with commercial banks and to even fostering uh, the green bond market by that we as the biggest multinational bond issuer in the market that we issue green bonds to ensure that the capital market gets appetite for these kind of investments. Um, now with the little time available let me now, come to the second question is how you in this region can benefit better from the funding. And I think uh, currently we're at a very crucial time in the region because we're at the beginning of the next programming period of the EU structural funds. This is the time when we see whether this regional strategy really works. Because a lot of the EU funding for the next programming period is going to be decentralized funding. That means there will be funding structural funds available on the regional level. And it would be very important, I think, if you as the main stakeholders of this region use your excellent capability of self-organization. When you look around here, you see all of these uh, initiatives that have started up in the past years. So you have something that differentiates you from other regions. You are able to develop projects on a regional level. You have the networks, you have the the, the contact points that can help you in developing projects. Now, once this project identification is there, I think it's very important to take full advantage of all of the advisory services that are there by the Commission, by the bank, to really develop a project that is ready to obtain funding. And with the, um, despite the multitude of funds that are going to be available from the Commission and from the EIB in the next period, knowing that the financial crisis has left its mark on our public finances, it will be essential to get the private sector involved in the projects that are profitable and that can be carried, carried out of, by the private sector. So when we go into the next programming period, there will be discussions on programs involving public-private partnerships or any kind of other forms where there is a possibility to obtain also financing or risk sharing by the corporations and by the private sector. And I think it is very important if you develop a project that you get the structure and the participants right from the very moment. And there are a lot of help being provided on the regional level in, uh, uh, in the Baltic Sea region. Um, so it's advisory, 
its cooperation with the private sector. And then um, I think it's the blending between the structural funds that are available from the Commission plus our long-term attractive funding that will ensure that the green projects that you are about to, to launch are going to be a success and are going to create jobs and employment in this region and that will make this region even more competitive and at the front of the European development. Thank you very much.